Hey, this is Josh Boyd with Fight Church in Las Vegas, and uh, it's Valentine's Day. I wanted to uh, share a couple of thoughts and a couple of scriptures with you about the holiday and uh, hopefully be an encouragement to you and, and uh, challenge you a little bit as well as myself. So uh, let's jump right in. Uh, the origin of Valentine's Day is a little bit fuzzy. Uh, there's some history and some legend uh, that have led us to where we are today. But uh, there were some saints back uh, in history named uh, Valentine, and uh, a few of them were actually uh, appear in, in literature and in records uh, as being martyrs. And uh, the whole theme of Valentine's Day has evolved into a uh, really revolving around love and uh, you know you see the pictures of the cherubs and Cupid and all of this thing but but really we've made it into a romantic thing uh, with a with a love theme and so today I wanted to look at a few scriptures that have to do with love and uh, talk about what love is what love isn't and uh, hopefully challenge us to uh, begin to love more and to love more purely and so uh, one of the portions of scripture that revolves around love is 1 Corinthians 13. And it actually revolves around love so much that it's called the love chapter. And most of you are probably familiar with it. You've seen uh, a portion of it uh, sewn onto a pillow or on a tapestry or in a framed art piece in, in a dentist's office or a doctor's waiting room uh, because it's very familiar to most people in our culture. Uh, the, the portion of scripture from 1 Corinthians 13 that I'm, that I'm going to read to you um, is something that I use in all of the wedding ceremonies that I do and as well as in the premarital counseling sessions uh, leading up to marriage because it really gives us a standard for what love should be. And so I just want to read it to you real quickly and then share some thoughts about it. Uh, starting with verse 1, it says, If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I, if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give my body over to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. And then here's the more familiar part. It starts with verse 4. It says, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres and verse 8 says love never fails that's a pretty amazing standard uh, that love is and isn't um, when I talk with uh, couples in premarital counseling I say listen this is forever you're vowing your love one to another and this is the standard you know, all of the things that I just read about patience and kindness and not envying and not drudging up the past and being forgiving and not easily angered because um, loving people is hard. I don't know if you know this, <laughs> but, you know, loving your family members can be difficult. I mean, we have this this underlying love, I guess, where, you know, we're blood related, we would take a bullet for one another. Um, but when it comes to daily interaction, when it comes to loving someone in the tangible ways, um, it, it can be difficult because people are people. And uh, sometimes we don't live up to the standards that are described here. And we do drudge up the past. And we aren't patient. And we do envy. And sometimes we boast. And sometimes we are easily angered. But it's something that we need to strive for. We need to take this standard and, and set it as our bar. And we need to work towards it. Um, if you go down to verse 13, it says, And now these three remained, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. 
and I and I know that that's just a short per, uh, a portion of scripture, but I think that that is really kind of the theme. If you read throughout the the New Testament, if you read about Jesus's ministry and then the disciples and the apostles, and as the early church was forming and uh, they were going out and they were spreading the gospel, it all revolved around loving one another. If you do a search in scripture and uh, you just look for the word love, it appears a bazillion times. If you uh, throw in there in a keyword search and you do love one another, it appears so much because so much of the gospel that was being shared, so much of the letters that Paul was writing to these early churches, the central theme to all of these things was God loved us, he sent Jesus, Jesus loved us, and then he called us to love one another and to love our neighbors and to love those around us and to love them so much that we would care for them and we would give them the shirt off our back and we would do things for them. We would live in community and uh, truly love one another. Um, if you go to John 13, 34, it says, A new command I give, to, uh, I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Jesus is saying, I loved you this much, and that's what I expect for you to love one another. And he says that because he, lo because he loved us so much, that we must love these people. And uh, if you go to the very next verse, it says, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So he's not saying that people are going to know you're a believer if you're out there thumping on the Bible, that you're standing on your soapbox, that you're doing all these things. He says that people will know you're my disciples by the way that you love each other, by the way that you care for people. And I think that that's very important because I think that we have it kind of backwards and uh, there's so many times that we have all of these good intentions and motives, but we go about it all wrong. And I know that when I interact with non-believers, people who maybe don't come from a church background, even atheists and uh, agnostic people that, that, that don't even believe in spirituality or, or God or anything, you know, one of the big problems that they have with the church or that they have with Christians and believers is the lack of love. And uh, I even saw a book recently that uh, just came out, I believe, not too long ago by a pastor about believers. And it's called Why We Eat Our Young or something like that, um, because it's a real problem. I know that I grew up in church my whole life. And then I was in church ministry for, you know, over 10 years before moving out here to Las Vegas uh, to do a different type of ministry. And uh, I've seen my fair share of people not treating others with love and with kindness and with forgiveness and all of these, these things that love is supposed to be what Jesus taught us to do. And uh, so I just want to challenge you uh, on this day that's supposed to be all about love and revolve around love. Love those around you, not just in a romantic way with your spouse or your significant other, but also your, your family, your children, um, and uh, your brothers and your sisters and your neighbors and all of those around you. Because like John 13, 35 says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Let's get out there and love some people. Thank you so much.